outfits. From prehistory to the 1920s, undergarments that support the bust and emphasize the waist have been in fashion for hundreds, even thousands of years. And though the 21st century has switched from these boned and laced contraptions to the tight, man-made plastic material of today, these foundation layers are still used. Historical corsets, like the ones that we're working from today, have been adapted to many shapes, figures, and eccentricities, and like the ones in history, have adapted to the shape and needs of the wearer. But what if the wearer isn't the typical biosex female that these undergarments are made for? In comes my partner Janaya, a trans femme woman who has agreed to and is actually very enthusiastic about me adapting historically accurate Victorian ladies' menswear for their wardrobe. It's not a common story for corsets to be used by trans women to make a more typically feminine silhouette, but it's not particularly niche either. From my research, waist reduction in these corsets are a little bit more extreme, switching out the typical 2-3 to three lace down for a 5-7 to seven inch waist waist reduction, mostly since DMAV bodies are more receptive to lacing down. There's a preference in the community for the underbust corset due to its flexibility to be worn with any bust sides without looking over or under stuffed. The project will not be typical of what all trans women want in adapting historical corsets to their needs, but I hope to educate corseteers on both sides on how to adapt history to the trans femme form. First up on our to-do list, the consultation, because communication is sick. Sunny. Uh, hello to the 26 <laughs> people that suddenly followed me from the costume guide. Uh, welcome! My name is Sunny, I'm a non-binary costumer, and I put videos on the internet. And that's what I do. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, my name is Janaya. Um, uh, Janaya Riley is who I go by online. I'm a a uh, non-binary trans femme person that does a lot of stuff. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a voice actor, um, I stream myself reading Homestuck fanfiction, um, <laughs> and I build crossbows. I do a lot of different things. Yes. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what started this was I basically was talking to Janaya and I was like, hey, you know, I'd make you a corset, but then I'd have to, like, make you this entire thing. I'd, <laughs> I'd get way too carried away. And they were like... Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess I'm doing that now. I think you already kind of have an era that you want to go for with this one. Um, yeah, I guess we're looking at, like... Edwardian era, I think it would be. Edwardian? Is it? Or like late Victorian, early Edwardian, I think is the... Yeah. Most of the references that you've shown me. Yeah. And I'm excited. I don't have my Edwardian with me because <laughs> uh, the Edwardian that I made in my corset vlog that uh, blew up, Link and I, uh, <laughs> that one was so poorly made and I didn't really like it. And it didn't have a front, a center front busk, which yours is gonna have a center front busk because I know the pain of getting into a corset that doesn't have a center front I busk. I will take your word for it that that's a good thing to have. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the finish, the kind of finished one, the one that has bones in it. Cool. Very nice. What are the bones made of? Um, they're, uh, Synthetic whalebone, aka plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds fancier when you say synthetic whalebone. <laughs> Here you go. That's the you use like the strainer material that they have. Yeah. Okay. It's not a whale bone. It's more like whale fingernail material. <laughs> That's gross. It is gross. <laughs> <laughs> I have the uh, pattern uh -huh. though. The pattern is cut to. Uh, the size that I was before COVID-19 happened, so <laughs> it would fit neither of us. Probably larger than that. You are not a 25 inch waist. I am definitely not a 25 inch waist. <laughs> I am not either. <laughs> Do you have any, like, particular hang-ups, I guess? Um, what do you mean? Like, I don't know. Uh, you never really talked to me about, like, waist training or anything like that. Um, I don't I don't think that you're a person that wants 
not, super reduction? No, not really. Um, like, one of the big things is I've got... So I, I'm going to start HRT very soon, and from my understanding, um, I am very likely to lose a lot of fat around my midsection because that's where pretty much all of my body fat is stored right now, mm -hmm. and that means it's going to go to my breasts and my hips. Mm -hmm. So my waist may get a lot smaller, yeah. and my hips and busts might get a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure exactly to what extent that'll happen. Like, I'm not super concerned with specific waist training or anything. I just, I like the way the corset looks, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it, you know, accentuating the figure a little bit is good, but I don't have any specific goals in mind. Yeah. What amount of reduction are you uh, willing? <laughs> Um, I don't know, because I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really familiar with how it's going to feel. Um, I guess I would say the amount where I can still comfortably breathe would be yeah. like my general <laughs> goal. Yeah, well, um, I mean, <laughs> I had an Artelier Sylph pattern that mm -hmm. was a 24 and a half inch waist. Uh, that feeling is not something that I want to put you through. I'm not interested. So <laughs> we're going to probably get the corset pattern that I have on the laptop off screen um, and have it to like maybe a comfortable waist reduction is like uh, two inches, three inches. Yeah, that sounds fine. Uh, so we're going to Take some measurements. Uh, I think now we should probably like put a waist tape around you mm -hmm. and see how you feel with the two inch okay. reduction and then we can probably like head on over to the fabric store and get some like cotton canvas or something. Cool, sounds good. Okay, cool. With our trip to the fabric store we can now enter step two, trials and tribulation. At the fabric store, we got three samples of poly sateen, an eggplant hue, one with a red cast and the other with a blue cast, and a wine red. Four yards of cotton canvas and two yards of a very cool wool tartan dupe oh, yeah. that we got for like five dollars. <clears throat> I'll let that sink in and we can move on. Taking from our truly Victorian corset pattern, we began our journey. Hello everybody, I am just back. Janiya just left. So, here, let me put you. Hello. <laughs> so, Janiya just left. We have our corset toile right over here. But for right now, I'm going to go die. After dying and being resurrected a la Jason Todd, we both decided that making a smaller twall would be more helpful. Here's a little graphic of all the things we changed in between our first and our second twall. fittings off camera and we can enter our final stage. Part 3. Make it pretty. Of course we must talk about the elephant in the room, as many historical costumers will pick up on. I never made her a chemise. Being a good little historical costumer and having to wait for a corset busk to be flown across the United States from plague-ridden New York City to somehow even more plague-ridden Austin, Texas, I made time to work on the hand-sewn pin-tucky goodness that is Janiya's chemise. 
pretty, but not bogged down with lace and ribbon and frills, this chemise is very much a reflection of my friend who is now... Before I get in too deep, Janiya's Christmas bus came in and I could get back to work. Here is the finished corset in all of its royal purple and gold glory. I may do another video detailing what I've learned from making this corset, but for right now, I'm tired and I need to make something that is not an under thing. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.